How's it going guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new test hand video. This time around we're going to be doing Infernoble Knights. Uh, we did recently in Toon Chaos get basically the first round of Infernoble stuff that we needed to sort of, you know, get the, the groundwork for this deck. I would say some of the more important cards like Renat and Immortal Phoenix. Uh, but come Rise of the Duelist, which is our next core set, I believe come August, we will get the remainder of the, you know, cards, at least for this particular build, um, to play it as you'll see in this video. So, um, I was really looking for a new deck uh, a couple weeks ago and really couldn't think of anything, but I remember a few people in my Discord, one person, one or two people in particular, uh, that were playing this deck and I, I was saying that, you know, that seems like a really cool and interesting combo deck utilizing some engines and stuff that sort of piqued my interest, uh, you know, um, engines that are a bit of a throwback to me like Ignite. For those of you that have been watching this channel for a long time, you know that I used to play Ignite FTK way back in the day uh, with Rongo and Royal Magical Library. So uh, definitely it was sort of was like a no-brainer for me when deciding, a, you know, to pick this deck up and why I did. So, uh, but first I want to give a huge shout out to Eros in my Discord. Uh, he's pretty much taught me everything that I know about this deck and has got me sort of uh, on my feet with this deck. So uh, thank you to you for sort of showing me the ropes. Um, this build will be playing Fiber, Aurordon, uh, Link Ross, Shenanigans. Uh, but we do actually have another build in the it already sort of made that plays without fiber, uh, plays without Aurora Down and Link Cross. There's actually a build I, I kind of almost like more than this one um, because it plays a bit of a Goki engine. But maybe sometime in the future I'll, I'll do a test and video with that particular build for those that are interested because I think Needle Fiber is on a, a bit of a, a you know time, uh, a short time uh, period of what how long it'll be legal. Um, it certainly won't be legal forever, I know that for sure, unless the card gets power creeped into oblivion, which hopefully doesn't happen. But we're going to get started, and of course I want to give a shout out uh, to Imperium Duelist, provider of this lovely playmat. Uh, same thing with these sleeves that I'm rocking here on the main deck. I decided I'd go with the orange, the amber orange on the back with the black inside um, on the main deck and rocking the uh, maroon and you know the wine, I guess, and the white extra deck sleeves. Uh, you can get this mat and many more on their site as well, or their custom mat bags with some beautiful artwork on it. This one here has the El Shadal Construct. They've got Magic Spectre Kieran, Evil Swarm Exiton Knight, uh, Gungnir. So if you guys want to pick up any amazing products and then check out the link to their site down below. And you can get it all 10% off using that discount code WINNERKILLS10 OFF. And if you're buying anything on TCG Player, do not forget to use my affiliate link down below. Uh, because any, uh, uh, you know, any cards you buy using that link, a small bit of the revenue of your purchase will go back into the channel and it does help out a lot. And also consider hitting that join button down below to become a member of the channel today. So this is a 50 card build. I also want to preface that some people have probably already clicked off at the, 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 the you know, the, simply hearing me say that it's a 50 card build, but there's a, there's about like 30 searchers in the deck. Um, the entire Ignite engine itself is just searchers and also extenders at the same time simply because of the pendulum summoning mechanic uh, and sometimes that mechanic comes in really really clutch a majority of the time especially in the non-fiber builds that we'll be showcasing probably sometime in the future. Um, this is a blind going first deck. It's always going to want to go first. This is a combo deck. Um, it, it, I really wouldn't ever side if I were going first. I'd probably only save the sides for if I knew I was going to go second 100%. So let's take a look at our opening hand here. We have Ignite Templar, Ignite Paladin, Ignite Veteran, Ignite Squire, and our fifth and final card is a copy of the uh, Ignite Crusader. So this is a pretty common hand. We play three of every Ignite, which I believe totals to 24 Ignites because I think there are eight of them. Um, yeah, I think there are eight. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically sometimes a hand will look like this, but we're basically trying to get a few things. We're trying to get to I Sold. Uh, we're trying to get to the Infernal Knight uh, Olivier uh, because he does help us sort of complete the combo. He's a typical combo that I end up going for. So I'm going to showcase the typical standard combo with this particular hand. You could do this combo uh, in numerous other ways. If you open like Rota, if you open up Sublimation Knight, um, if you open up Heritage of the Chalice, there's tons of different ways you could do it. Um, but this is just one of many ways. Um, so first things first, we're going to take a look at what scales we have. We have two sevens, or three sevens and two twos. Uh, so I'm going to play a seven, and I'm going to play a two. And these are level threes, which are pretty good to get in the scale because they can help us make synchros later on if need be. So we're going to go ahead and destroy those two. Uh, and we're going to add a fire warrior from our deck to our hand. And we're going to add sublimation knight, which is pretty awesome. And then we're going to normal sublimation knight. Interesting enough, they can't ash this card because we're not adding or sending anything from our deck. 
um, which is really good. But basically what it does is it's going to equip a fire warrior uh, to it from our deck. Uh, and we're going to go with none other than Squeak Knight, which is the greatest card I think probably ever printed uh, in this game. And for obvious reasons, the mousetrap shield and the, the cheese spear. Um, he's sort of become a, a bit of a meme in our community, at least on Twitch and Discord. Um, by the way, join Discord link below. So we're going to equip the Squeak Knight, and then since it's a union, we can just unequip it and special summon it to the field. It has an on-field effect, but we're not going to use that because that'll lock us out of the extra deck pretty much. Uh, but since we have two warriors, we're going to go into I Sold. And a Sold is going to do what it does, and that's going to add us a warrior. Now, the nice thing about a Sold here... Um, I, apart from like other things, other decks that I've seen use a sold, it usually gets a card next turn for a follow-up. But basically, whatever card we get here, we can still use as a search, you know, to get more searches, which is great. So we want to make sure we grab an Ignite that we don't already have. So I'm going to go for Cavalier, because if we grab, per se, uh, a Crusader, we can't Pendulum Summon the Crusader out of our extra deck because of the, the, the restriction that a sold will add on to that card. Uh, so we'll just add a card that we don't have that we can just literally use uh, for search fodder later on. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and use the Paladin, and we'll go ahead and use that Cavalier. Uh, we'll destroy them, and then we're going to go ahead and search uh, for the Flame Noble Knight Olivier. Now we'll use the effect of Isolde, and we're going to go ahead and send away Living Fossil, and we're going to special summon a level 1 warrior from our deck. And that level one is going to be none other than Renaud. And Renaud on Special Summon is going to add back uh, a Fire Warrior or an Equip in a Grave. And we're going to go with the Living Fossil. Uh, which is basically just a monster born for level four or lower monsters. Uh, but it negates their effects on field. Um, which isn't too big of a deal. So yeah, instead of adding Olivier, I'm actually going to add another copy of Renaud. Instead of sending Living Fossil, I'm going to send Durendal, which is a new equip spell that we're going to be getting in Rise of the Duel. So again, uh, same thing. We're sending the one equipped to summon the level one, and this on Special Summon we will add this back. Then we're going to use Durendal on this to equip it, and basically send it off to add a level five or lower uh, Fire Warrior monster from our deck to our hand, and that is going to be the Olivier. The Olivier is pretty much a very important combo piece here um, for several reasons. One, because of its level, and secondly, because it's a tuner. Uh, so we're going to tribute off or not after it's done its thing. Um, and then we're going to link off the Assault into a copy of that Link Ross. Um, then Ross is going to summon a few tokens here. So two level one tokens to be exact. Now from here, since we have a tuner and a non-tuner, we're going to go ahead and link into the Halka Fibrax, or the uh, formerly known as the Needle Fiber. And then on summon here, we're going to summon a tuner from our deck. Uh, and we're going to go with the uh, Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion. There is a Six Samurai Genba in here. But that is a part of a different combo, an anti-Nibiru combo, which I hope to be able to showcase to you guys uh, in this particular video. Now, we technically could have done it in this hand because we opened four Ignites. But again, I wanted to start off this video by showcasing the standard run-of-the-mill combo that you'll do with this deck. Uh, so now we're going to synchro the O-Lion and our level 1 token for a copy of, you guessed it, the... Martial Metal Marcher, the rather popular Martial Metal Marcher. Uh, we're going to summon a token off of O-Lion, get the proper uh, level token here, and then we're going to summon out uh, the Olivier from the grave off of the Martial Metal Marcher. Uh, now we're going to synchro with this 4 and this 1 uh, to go into a level 5, and that's going to be none other than the Flame Noble Knight Vanguard Roland. Big Roland, I know we got Roland in Toon Chaos. I'm not currently playing that card in this particular build. It can be. But in this particular build, I'm not. But we're going to use this effect uh, that's basically going to activate uh, in the end phase. It says, if this card is synchro summon, you can activate this effect during the end phase of this turn. Send one equip spell from your deck to the graveyard, then add one warrior monster from your deck to your hand. So that's pretty good. It also has a graveyard effect, which we'll get to later. But right now, we're going to go ahead and link this token and our Halka Fibrax into a copy of Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon. This is going to summon out three level three tokens. Now from here, we're going to synchro this 5 and this level 3 here uh, to go into none other than the Borload Savage Dragon. And Borload Savage Dragon, usually at this point, I try to equip uh, the Assault since that will have the most attack uh, to give to our Savage Dragon. And that will put two counters on it. Uh, so two interruptions technically over its uh, lifespan. Uh, and gaining an additional 800 attack, so I'll put... Uh, that number two on there. Now from this point, we're going to synchro these level, this level three token, this level three token, and the marcher 
for a copy of the new Synchro, uh, the Flame Noble Knight Emperor Charles, or Chuck as I like to call him. Um, and then he has an effect that will also be activating in the end phase. But we're not done just yet. We're going to play both of our scales here. And this is where I messed up a little bit earlier. I uh, always want to be mindful that you have a complete set of scales uh, in your hand if you can help it. So uh, instead of playing uh, the Pal Cavalier and the Paladin earlier to search out the Renaud, we should have just played the Veteran and the Cavalier uh, to leave ourselves with Templar and Paladin uh, to have a complete scale. So that's a bit of my apology. One little small thing that I forgot, but you do need to sort of be mindful of your Pendulum uh, scales. Um, that's one thing I still need to work on the most of this deck is the Ignite aspect of it, as it can be, uh, you know, a bit of a punishing factor later on if you do forget some of those steps. Uh, but now, since we have full scales and we have level 3 access in our extra deck, we're going to go ahead and special summon uh, this uh, Crusader from our extra deck, of course, to the zone that a Link Monster points to. And then we're going to special summon the Infernal Knight Renaud, since we do control a Fire Warrior monster. Uh, and it's treated as a tuner if special summon this way. So now we're going to synchro the Renaud and the Crusader into a copy of Herald of the Arclight. And then last but not least, we're going to go ahead and destroy these scales here to search one other Fire Warrior monster from our deck. And he's right on the bottom of the deck. So perfect. And, for, and the Immortal Phoenix uh, Gear Freed, which will summon to the field uh, by banishing an equip spell from our grave, the only one we can banish. Is the Durendal. You could also banish the Assault from the field as well if you were out of Equip Cells in the Grave. Um, Savage Dragon would keep the counters to negate stuff. It would just lose the attack. Uh, but now we'll use Olivier and Grave to equip to the uh, the Gear Freed so it does have the ability to negate. But now since it's equipped with this, it cannot be targeted by card effects. But now we're entering the end phase. So we have three interruptions plus a pop in the graveyard due to Roland being able to summon itself out of the grave to, you know, equip itself out of the grave to something we control. And when Charles is equipped with something, we can destroy a card in the field. So we're going to resolve Roland here first, which is going to send an equipped spell from our deck to the grave. And we're going to send Smoke Grenade of the Thief. It's a very old card, but we're going to send that to add a warrior monster from our deck to our hand. I usually just like to add Renaud as a bit of a follow-up for next turn. And now we're going to activate the effect of Charles, which is going to go ahead and equip it from uh, equip a spell uh, from it from our hand or grave, I believe. Yeah, from our hand or grave. And then we can also equip it with another uh, monster from our deck. And I'm going to go ahead and equip it with either the Astolfo or that Ogier um, because it will offer protection as well, making it can't be destroyed by card effects. Uh, but then we're going to activate the effect of Charles when a monster on the field is equipped with something. Uh, basically, we can target a card on the field. Uh, and destroy it. What destroy one card in the field doesn't even target. So we can destroy a smoke grenade of the time of the thief. I don't know why I keep saying time thief, but we can destroy this card. But basically, when this card is destroyed, uh, we can look at our opponent's hand and select one card from their hand and discard it uh, to the grave. So now we get to cherry pick any card out of their hand, which means they need to top deck Dark Lure no more to basically out our entire field. We have Renaud for a follow up. This card cannot be destroyed, uh, cannot be targeted. This card cannot be destroyed by card effects. We have a negate and a floodgate here. Omni negate here, monster negate here, and the ability to pop something in grave with Roland, uh, which is pretty strong. And of course, that follow up uh, for next turn. We're drawing Summoner's Art for turn, which is pretty good. Um, so yeah, that is going to do it uh, for that first set. And also in the end phase, again, during their end phase, we can do the same thing. You know, equip Smoke Grenade and equip another monster from our deck, like a Stolfo, and then trigger the effect to destroy again and take another card out of their hand, if we still need to. Um, but yeah, so that's it for that first test hand. Um, I'm fairly confident I'll be able to show off the anti-Nibiru combo randomly here through a, like a natural random hand. Um, but we'll just see if we can get to that within the next test hand. But yeah, that basically, in a nutshell, is the standard combo. Um, I did make a slight mistake there regarding my Ignite management. Uh, but that is bound to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and reshuffle the deck here. Basically what, you know, a hand of Ignites can do essentially with this build. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle up and we'll do our second test hand of the video. All right, the deck has been shuffled. We'll go ahead and draw into our next hand here. We open Ignite Margrave, Ignite Veteran, Ignite Gallant, Ignite Paladin, and our fifth and final card is a copy of Heritage of the Chalice. This is basically like a Rota in of itself. Basically a Rota with just more steps. But it says add a Noble Knight Monster or one Noble Arms card from our deck to our deck or graveyard to your hand. It says if a Noble Knight Monster equipped with a Noble Arms equipped spell is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard. While this card is in the graveyard, you can add this card uh, to your hand. So that other effect really never comes up. But it can. 
Uh, so for this particular hand, I'm fairly certain that we can pull off uh, the, the anti-Nibiru play. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. We're going to start by activating Heritage of the Chalice. And I'm going to use this to actually go ahead and grab the, uh, the Noble Arms uh, Durendal. The Flame Noble Arms Durendal. And then I'm going to go ahead and play two scales here. Uh, making sure we have a complete set of scales for later. Um, so I'm going to play Gallant and Veteran. And it's important for this combo, we're going to need a level 5 Ignite in our hand. But again, we can, get, we can basically cherry pick that uh, later on through a Sold. Um, then we're going to send these two off basically to go ahead and get a search. And we're going to add the Flame Noble Knight Ogier. We'll normal summon this card. Basically says if this card is normal or special summon, we can send a Fire Warrior Monster or Noble Arms card from our deck to the graveyard uh, except itself. So there's a few orders you can do this essentially. Like you don't have to do it the exact way that I'm doing it. Here I'm going to use this card to send uh, the Immortal Phoenix Gear Feed from our deck to the grave. Now if we already like opened Durendal... Uh, we could have just like searched uh, Gear Freed instead and then played Durandal to search something else and sort of continued on from there. But uh, this is the sort of way that I'm playing it out. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and play Durandal, equip it to this, and then send it off. And we're going to go ahead and add a copy of the Renaud because, again, we'll need to be able to get into I Sold uh, if need be. Um, this card will definitely help us do that. But now we're going to go ahead and special summon the Renaud and we're going to activate Renaud's effect. Uh, which basically says, um, if this card, especially something you can target one of your fire warrior monsters or one of your equip spells that is banished from your graveyard and add it to your hand. So we're not going to add back an equip spell. We're going to add back Gear Freed this time around. And then we're going to go ahead and link these two off into a copy of a sold here. We'll use a sold's first effect. It's very important that we only use its first effect here. And we're going to go ahead and grab an Ignite. We already have Margrave in hand, uh, which is good. And we have a complete scale. So I'm actually just going to grab the other level 5 Ignite. Uh, the Ignite Cavalier, which I think is the Ignite we grabbed last hand, but again, it really doesn't make too big of a difference. So now the important thing, before we use the Soul's Effect here, we cannot use the Soul's Effect until we get Gear Feed on the field. We're going to banish the Durendal, or whatever equip spell we have in our grave, and then use Ogier's Graveyard Effect to equip uh, to the Gear Freed. So now we have a live Monster Negate. That is our fourth summon, um, so we can negate Nibiru if need be. So now we're going to activate the other effect that everybody else knows of the uh, the assault here. We're gonna send living fossil and we're gonna send the uh, smoke grenade of the thief uh, From the deck to the grave and that is gonna summon a level 2 warrior from our deck And that is gonna be none other than the six samurai Genba if I can find it here So we'll summon six uh, the secret six samurai Genba not using any on field effects We're just simply needing a level 2 tuner that we can get onto the field very easy now We're gonna link off the assault into a copy of Ross We'll use Ross here to summon two tokens, two level ones. We're going to Synchro Genba and a token for Marcher. It's probably my favorite part about the combo here is using these uh, level three Synchros. Marcher is going to bring back Genba again, and we're going to Synchro Genba and the last level one token for a copy of Tatsunoko. And now that we have Tatsunoko on the field, we're going to use Tatsunoko and the level five Ignite that we searched or already had in our hand, whatever, uh, to Synchro from hand with the Tatsunoko and the uh, Cavalier, the level 5, to go for a copy of the Adamancipator Risen Dragite. Um, you don't have to go for Dragite here. You could go for Savage Dragon, but I like going for Dragite because we'll be using this sort of as Synchro Fodder uh, later on. So now we're going to go ahead and Synchro, or Link rather, with the uh, Link Cross and the Marcher for a copy of Halka Fibrax. Halka Fibrax is just going to go right up into uh, the, after we summon the Jet Synchron, go right up into a copy of Aurora Chief. And Aurora Dawn is going to summon, of course, three level three tokens. I know these are level one tokens, but I don't have two more of the Mecha Phantom Beast tokens, unfortunately. But we're going to use Aurora Dawn here now to destroy itself and a token to summon the O-Lion from the deck. And this is where things still, still things are getting pretty complicated right now, but they still are a little, little still a little more complex things to go. So keep in mind, this is still a level 3 token. But we're going to synchro this level 2 and this level 3 token here for a copy of the Flame Noble Knight Vanguard Roland. We'll activate the effect to activate in the end phase. And we'll just put this here since it's a level 3. And we get another token off of the O-Lion as well. So now we're going to synchro uh, this level 5 and this 3. I know it's a level 1 token, but it is a level 5. Uh, then we're going to summon out Savage Dragon. And Savage Dragon... 
uh, is going to equip the Aurorodon here, since we have that Link Monster in the graveyard at the point of its summon. And that has that three counters on it. Now we have a few options here. Um, we can go for Charles, uh, or we could go for uh, the Herald. Uh, but I'm actually going to go for Charles here. And we're going to use Jet Synchron and Grave, and we're going to discard this copy of Ignite Paladin. And then we're going to Synchro with the uh, the Dragite and the Jet Synchron. This will get banished to go for a copy of Charles, just like that. And that'll basically allow us to end phase, take a card out of their hand, uh, which is pretty important. Otherwise, uh, we wouldn't be able to do it. Um, so that's that's kind of why I wanted to go for the Charles as opposed to uh, you know, leaving the Dragite and going for the Herald. Uh, so now at this point during the end phase, we can basically, uh, you know, dump an equip spell from our deck to the grave. We'll just dump a Durendal and then we'll just add any warrior. So we'll just use, uh, we'll just add Crusader, which will complete our scales for next turn. And then we're going to use the effect of Charles to equip, uh, the smoke grenade of the time thief or of the thief not the time i always say time thief and i like to always equip it into a place where there's a pendulum scale because we'll be able to remove it um because if you put it anywhere else you're just gonna have a monster stuck in your pendulum scale that you're not gonna be able to get rid of uh so we can equip olivier from our deck and then we'll use charles here to destroy the smoke grenade and again we get to cherry pick literally any card out of their hand which is pretty busted if you ask me and we have full scales uh for next turn which is also pretty good. And we still have three interruptions with this extra token that do be kind of just chilling here. Um, but it's all right, if you ask me. Um, graveyard looking pretty good. Uh, the only thing that would make it better is if we had a way to... If we had like another Roland in our hand. Or uh, not Roland, but Renaud. We could summon Renaud out and synchro the Renaud with uh, the Mecha Phantom Beast. Or if we had a hard open, something for say like Living Fossil. Or if we had a Pendulum play to make early on, there's probably a few other ways we could also get to Herald on top of this. Another thing you could do here technically is make uh, True King of All Calamities since we do play that within the extra deck. So that is entirely up to you. Um, but we do have, again, the, the Omni Negate here, the Monster Negate, and a pop from the uh, Vanguard rolling in the graveyard. And they are, we took their most powerful card out of their hand. And we also played around Nibiru with a full pendulum scale uh, for next turn. And we're drawing a copy of Sublimation Knight, which is very, very good. So we were able to pull off the anti-Nibiru combo. Hopefully I didn't butcher it because um, I'm expecting to butcher at least something, or at least one thing uh, in this video. So glad it wasn't that one because I'm pretty sure we pulled it off uh, for the most part. So uh, yeah, the, the, basically the anti-Nibiru play can be done if you open like four Ignites or two Ignites in a way. Uh, to get to an equip spell because you will need an equip spell regardless to be able to get gear freed on the field uh, in the first place um, and everything else just sort of sorts itself out so i'm gonna go ahead and shuffle here and we'll do another test hand all right our deck has been shuffled let's go ahead and do our third test hand of the video and see what we can pull off here we open summoners art durendal veteran jet synchron and our fifth card is a copy of ignite squire so another card i was playing here and sort of it was a spell a searcher spell it was painful decision but the main reason i decided to cut painful decision was because it's basically a worse summoners art for the most part summoners art i like a little bit more because you can draw it in multiples and it can still net you a search otherwise you know whereas like, Painful Decision can't, because you can only activate and resolve one Painful Decision uh, per turn. So that's why I went with the Summoners Art over Painful Decision. Uh, so with this hand, I'm pretty sure we can still do that Anti-Nibiru combo, and I figured since Anti-Nibiru is pretty enticing, we might as well try to go for it with this particular hand. Now, we did open Jet Synchron, but it's fine, because Needle Fiber summons from hand as well, so that that's not going to slow us down too much. So we're going to start with... Uh, the Summoner's Art, and we're going to use Summoner's Art to go ahead and get, of course, any level 5 or higher uh, normal monster. I'm going to go ahead and grab Cavalier. That'll just give us a complete scale. And we did open a level 3, which is nice, so that could potentially come in handy later on. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and play uh, the Squire and the Veteran in our scales, and then we'll use their effects to destroy themselves to go ahead and search a Fire Warrior. And here we're going to add, we have to add the uh, the Ogier. The Ogier, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And then Ogier is going to go ahead and uh, send Foolish uh, that copy of the Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed, if I could find it. Sifting through this 50 card deck can be a bit challenging. 
Uh, but now we're going to equip it with Durendal. And we're going to go ahead and grab the Renaud. We'll special summon Renaud here. Now, technically, if you had other scales, you could do some other stuff here. But uh, we don't really have access to that right now. So we're going to summon Renaud. Renaud is going to add back the, not the Durendal rather, but the copy of Gearfreed. And then we're going to link these two off into a copy of Assault. And then Assault's going to do its thing. We already have our level 5, our designated level 5 uh, for next turn. Or not for next turn, but later when we do our Tatsunoko play. I'm going to add another level 5 here. It doesn't make a difference. Just something that can complete our scales. Um, if we decide to do a Pendulum Summon a little later down the road. Which we could, in theory, do to get a Herald on board. Uh, since we do have Squire in our extra deck. So I think we might be able to do that. So now we're going to summon... Uh, the Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed. Unfortunately, mine is not a collector's rare, but maybe I'll get one in the future. But either way, we're going to equip it with O Gear. And uh, now we're going to use the uh, copy of Two Tales of the Noble Knights. We're going to send both uh, the Smoke Grenade and that copy of Living Fossil. And we're going to go ahead and summon out, where is it? That copy of the Secret Six Samurai Genba. We're going to link off this into a copy of Ross. Ross is going to do its thing, summon some tokens. Two level ones to be exact. Then we're going to go ahead and synchro the Genba and the uh, token for Marcher. Marcher's going to bring back Genba. We're going to synchro Genba and the token for Tatsunoko. Now we're going to go ahead and use the... Uh, let's see here. We don't have to actually do this play just yet. Um, because we could, in theory here, Pendulum Summon first. Um, but I'm trying to think if we'll actually have the room to do it um yeah if we if we literally opened like any other scale except for jet singer and i think we would be able to do it here um but i don't know that we will be able to with this particular hand because right now we're gonna have to link these two into fiber fiber is gonna summon jet synchron from our hand and then we're gonna link fiber and jet synchron for uh you know aurora down which is gonna give us three more tokens so aurora down plus three tokens here uh, and then we can synchro from hand, but we won't have any room to pendulum summon um, unless we wait on the pendulum summon. Um, so I think I think actually we can, and I, hopefully I'm not screwing this up completely. But I think if we just wait because we don't really need to synchro right away into Dragite, which is what we'd be going for. We'll summon this from our hand off of the fiber, uh, the Helka Fibrax, and then we're gonna go for Aurorodon. Aurorodon will summon three. And then we use this fact destroy itself in a token to go ahead and get O-Lion. And then we can go ahead and synchro O-Lion in a token for the Flame Vanguard Roland. Activate Roland here. Synchro off the Roland in the level 3 for the Borload Savage Dragon here. And then we can use Savage Dragon to equip that Aurorodon uh, to it from our grave. Uh, so now technically... Yeah, no, we still can't do it um, because we still need this card in hand to be able to uh, to synchro with. So, I, for some reason, I thought we might have a way uh, to get around it, but I just don't think we do, which is totally fine. We're going to go for Dragite here. We also get that level 3 token from uh, the O-Lion that I never brought out, but we'll just bring it out now. Uh, now here we can, again, we can either discard this to make Herald, or we can go for uh, the Charles play. Um, so it really depends like if you want to cherry pick that card out of their hand you can um, So we might as well so we'll discard this and then we'll summon out this the jet synchron synchro with the jet synchron and the dragite for none other than Charles And again end phase will activate here. We'll send Durendal. We'll go ahead and add a copy of Renaud If I can find it here We'll add Renaud and then we're just gonna equip of course a smoke grenade in the grave and a Make sure we do this, uh, equip the smoke grenade into one of the zones that our pendulum scales could go into so we can clear it. And we'll just per se equip like a Stolfo. This will destroy this. We get to cherry pick a card. And again, we still have three interruptions uh, going into the next turn. So pretty solid test hand there. And basically those that don't know what a Stolfo does, this card comes in handy sometimes when your like, your uh, Assault gets stopped. Like if they Imperm your Assault or they Valor your Assault, the Stolfo can come in very, very clutch. Um, for a few reasons, um, or at least in some aspects. I don't, I don't know if that's per that particular aspect of this card can come in handy uh, for some synchro plays. 
Basically says you can banish one fire, fire warrior monster from your graveyard. Um, from your hand or graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand. Then you can make this card's level become the ba uh, the banished monster's level. You can banish this card from your graveyard during your second standby phase after this effect was activated. Special summon uh, this banished card. Then you can special summon one of your fire warrior monsters that was banished or in your graveyard. Um, so this card can be really, really clutch as sort of like a late game comeback card. Because you can just bring this card back and then just like bring Gear Freed back late game or uh, Charles. Like it can just be really game ending sometimes. I've actually had it come up a couple times in some testing matches uh, where that late game effect sort of just kicked in. Uh, so the sooner you can get a Stolfo engraved, the better. Because um, it will help you in the grind game because you have that sort of like Gold Sark like effect uh, working for you in the later stages of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and shuffle here, reset the deck, and we'll do our fourth test hand of the video. All right, deck has been shuffled. We'll go ahead and draw uh, into our next hand here for our fourth test hand. Let's see what we got. We have a copy of Ignite Paladin, copy of Ignite Crusader. There's that Jet Synchron again. Uh, there's that Ignite Veteran, and a copy of the Olivier. So this hand looking pretty good. Um, it's looking like we have uh, basically access to an entire combo. Now, with this particular hand, I do not think we will be able to pull off the anti-Nibiru combo because we do not have access early enough in our combo to get a equip spell in the graveyard. Yes, we could get one in the grave via a sold, but that means we've already summoned one, two, three, uh, four times, and the fifth summon would be Gear Freed, and Gear Freed doesn't get equipped with a monster directly on summon, so they would be able to Nibiru us here. So, fortunately... We do not have access to that combo, but we can sort of play this out a bit of a different way and still try to end on a, a, as good as a board as we possibly can. So with this particular hand, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to go ahead and play our scales here, the veteran and the crusader. We're going to destroy them and we're going to go search uh, that sublimation knight. And then we're going to normal sublimation knight uh, and then use this effect to equip himself from deck with none other than the most powerful monster in the game, that Squeak Knight. Squeak Knight will activate its effect to summon itself from the Spell and Trap Zone. And then we're going to go ahead and link those two off, of course, into none other than the Sold, the Two Tales of the Noble Knights. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and search here. And again, we'll just search an Ignite we don't already have access to. And I'm going to add Paladin. Uh, that will also complete our scales, giving us a 7 and a 2. Uh, now we're going to use the other effect of a Sold. And here we can really sort of pick and choose what we want to send. Um, we have a few options. Uh, we could send the Living Fossil to get the uh, Renaud out and add back the Living Fossil as sort of a Monster Reborn. Or we could send to Rendell to add uh, the, the Summon Renaud to add back this and we can use this to get Renaud again and then Summon Renaud later on uh, and then make a Synchro with that. So I'm actually going to instead send the Durendal here because I think we'll get more value out of it later on. So uh, we'll use the effect of Renaud here to add back Durendal. And since we already opened Olivier, uh, we can just tribute this off to go ahead and sort of start our normal combo here with Linkross uh, and Friends. I know everybody's favorite combo at this point. Uh, but we'll go ahead and summon out these two tokens. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and Synchro, or no, nah, I keep saying Synchro because uh, I always think that you know we have a tuner, so i got to mention that we're Synchroing, but we're going for Halka Fibrax. Halka Fibrax here is going to go ahead and summon uh, a O-Lion from our deck. Bit of a different summoning target here this time around. Uh, we do not need Jet Synchron here, which is nice. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and Synchro the O-Lion and that level 1 token for Marcher. We'll activate our facts here. We're going to get the uh, token from O-Lion. And then we're going to bring back uh, the Olivier from the Marcher. Now here at this point, uh, we can just play Durendal here. Send it off to go ahead and add a second copy of Renaud from our deck to our hand. Just like that. Then we'll synchro the 4 and the 1 here to go for the Vanguard Roland. Activate this effect to search in the end phase. Now here we don't want to synchro yet because we technically could, but we don't want to do that. We're going to link off the token from O-Lion and the Halka Fibrax into the big funny plane. Uh, that's going to summon a lot of tokens. And then we're going to synchro one of the level 3 tokens and the Roland into a copy of Borlode Savage Dragon. Giving us our first Omni Gate. Omni Negate, unfortunately, a little late into the combo. Uh, but we're going to equip it nonetheless with a Soul. I think a Soul is probably the best one to equip it with. Then we're going to synchro the 3 and the 2 other level 3 tokens uh, for a copy of the 
uh, the Emperor Charles. That will have its sort of own thing to do a little bit later on. Now, this is where things get interesting. We're going to go ahead and play Paladin and Templar in the scale. And we're going to go ahead and Pendulum Summon for one. We're going to summon out the Crusader. And then we'll use the in-hand effect of, Ro of Renaud uh, and synchro these two into a copy of Herald of the Arc Light. And then we're going to destroy both Templar and Paladin to go ahead and search a copy of the Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed as sort of like the last part of our play. Which will we'll banish a uh, equip spell from our grave. We'll just go ahead and banish the Drendel. And uh, then we'll use Olivia Engrave to equip it to the Gear Freed. And then again, we can activate the effect of uh, the uh, Roland Engrave to basically add a warrior uh, for, to our hand, basically at the cost of sending an equip spell from the deck to the grave. And of course, here we're going to want to send uh, that Smoke Grenade of the Time Thief, because then we'll equip this from our grave. To go ahead and add a fire warrior monster uh, from our deck to our hand. Or we're equipping a fire warrior monster here. My apologies. Um, so we'll go ahead and equip it with the O gear just for that extra protection. Onto the Charles. And uh, once the Charles is equipped, we'll use this fact to destroy a card. And that, of course, is none other than the smoke grenade. And the card they lose out of their hand will now actually be banished because of Herald the Arclight. So it's unlikely they'll get it back or get a graveyard effect off of it too. Which is really... Uh, a bit of a bonus there, if you ask me. So, very successful test hand there. Unfortunately, unable to go for the anti-Nibiru. I mean, maybe I could have, and I just didn't see it. Very possible. I still am uh, sort of in the infantile stages of learning this deck. Still have a long ways to go. Um, but again, sort of a, a nice example of how the Ignites can some sometimes be really good searchers, but also allow for some really good extension. I know there's a bit of a crowd out there that doesn't, per se, like the Ignite engine in here. Um, and whether one, you know, you know, the deck with the Ignite engine, whether it's superior or not to an, a deck without it. Um, I haven't done enough testing on my own to really formulate my own opinion, although I do like it. I really haven't encountered anything that I dislike about it at the moment, but who knows, maybe that will change, uh, going forward. So, uh, I'm going to shuffle here one last time, uh, for this video. Uh, hopefully it's not too terribly long, but we'll do one more test hand and, uh, wrap things up. All right, our deck has been shuffled here. Uh, we'll go ahead and draw the fifth and final test hand of the video and uh, see if we can pull off another combo. We've been successful pretty much uh, this entire time. Uh, so this hand is a little rough. We opened Genba, which is unfortunate because that means we cannot do the anti-Nibiru combo uh, because this essentially uh, needs to be in the deck for that to operate. Uh, unfortunately, it is. Yes, it is a Garnet. It does exist within the deck. We did open up Squeak Knight as well, which is a little unfortunate, but luckily Sublimation Knight can equip from hand. So we're going to have to use this board, this hand in a bit of a different way. I mean, not really, it's not so different, but we're going to basically, again, send off these scales. Uh, we're going to go for Sublimation Knight. Sublimation Knight will equip the Squeak. Squeak will summon itself. We'll go ahead and go for a Sold. If I can find it, there we go. And then a Sold is going to activate to add one. We're going to, we're going to complete our scales here. And add one again that we don't already have access to. So we'll add Paladin. And we'll dump the Durendal to go ahead and add Renaud. Renaud will add this back. We'll play the Durendal here. And this time around, we can't use it to get an extra Renaud, which is unfortunate. Uh, so what we're going to have to get here with this is Olivier. We'll special summon Olivier by attributing Renaud. And then we'll go ahead and link off the Assold for Link Cross. Summoning out two level one tokens. And then we're going to go ahead and link into the Halka Fibrax. Try to do this one a bit quicker since I think most people at this point should pretty much have the gist of what this deck is supposed to do. Uh, with, you know, the amount of test hands that we've done. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and summon, of course, O-Lion. Which happens to be the next card in the top of my deck. And then we'll synchro those two. Of course, going for Martial Metal Marcher. We're going to go ahead and activate O-Lion as Chainlink 2 and Marcher as Chainlink 1. We'll get our level 3 token. And we'll bring back our level 4 tuner, which will synchro with the level 1 from Link Cross. And that level 4 that we got back from Archer for the Flame Knight Vanguard uh, Roland. We'll synchro the token and the Halka Phyrax for the Auroradon. Summoning back out our 3 tokens. And then here we're going to go ahead and synchro the 5 and the level 3 uh, for a copy of Borlode Savage Dragon. You could go for Adamantspade or Risen Dragite if for some reason you were fearing... Uh, them having more spell and trap hate. Um, another thing to take note here too is in this particular combo, we don't really need Aurorodon's on field effect. 
So if we were to say open the smoke grenade, what we could do is basically play it and equip it to anything other than Auroradon. Um, because if we equip it to Auroradon, we'll end up losing a card in the process and not getting anything out of our smoke grenade. So we could say if we had uh, the smoke grenade, we could equip it to Borload Savage Dragon. Use Auroradon to trip itself off to destroy that copy of smoke grenade and take a card out of the hand a little bit earlier and then take another card again when we use charles in the end phase so that's just something important i wanted to bring up but now of course we're going to synchro and do a level nine using the remaining two level three tokens alongside our martial metal marcher for the flame knight emperor charles you could also go for a copy of trishula since we are playing that in the extra deck if you wanted to take more cards from them now, at this particular junction, there's really not a whole lot here that we can do. We do not have Jet Synchron in our hand, although we do have Genba. But unfortunately, it is a level 2, and we can't do too much with that. Um, we do have access to a Pendulum Summon, but it's not going to be the greatest. Again, we could just Pendulum Summon uh, the Crusader and the Templar, but we do not have access to a level 1 Tuner. Um, since we had to get Durandal to get the Olivier uh, early on. So basically what we'll do is we'll play these, uh, the Paladin and Margrave. And if we had other extenders, we could Pendulum summon the level 3. But we're just going to basically destroy them for a Gear Freed. Gear Freed will banish us an equip spell in the grave, the Durandal. We'll equip it with the Olivier. And then end phase, we'll send an equip spell, which is going to be Smoke Grenade here, since we do not already have an air grave. To add a Warrior Monster from our deck to our hand, I'm going to add Renaud. We'll activate Charles to equip it with this in the graveyard to go ahead and equip it with another monster from our deck. And I'm going to equip it with the Ogier for that bit of protection. And of course, Charles will destroy this, allowing us to take one card out of their hand at our choosing. So we have the two negates or the two counters on it here. It's up at 3,800. We have the quick effect pop uh, to activate in the grave through Roland. And once we equip this with this, we can destroy a card. Of course, it's on targeting. It also gained 500 attack. And this card can also not be destroyed by card effects. This card can also not be targeted, giving us a monster negate. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I try to go as in, in detail as possible um, and in depth as, as possible as possibly as I could, showcasing at least two two different variants of the combo. Um, you know, the anti Nibiru one and the standard route. I think it's sort of okay to go with the standard play game one. Um, if you don't see Nibiru, obviously, uh, you know, I, I think game two, you'd probably want to go the anti-Nibiru route if you didn't see the Nibiru game one. Um, but if, you, if you're really fearing the Nibiru, uh, you know, game one, you can always go for it. If you have if you have the stuff to go for it, I figure why not always just go for it. But if it's some reason you're not really fearing it um, and your hand's really not, you know, allowing for it, because you do need specific setup to go for the anti-Nibiru play. You know, you either need four Ignites uh, or you need a way to have like, uh, you know, two Ignites or, you know, Hard Open Renaud or, you know, have a, like something like Durendal or Heritage already in hand at the start of your turn. Um, or if you open up like Rhoda, you can just go get Ogier immediately and then play Heritage or whatever and then you're just sort of off to the races. But uh, yeah, this is basically my new obsession. I love this deck. I, I love the fact that I can play Ignites again. Um, I love the, the new Infernoble archetype as well. I love all the artwork of the cards. Uh, Immortal Phoenix Gear Feed is a fantastic card all around. Um, and this may be my new go-to competitive deck, uh, come Rise of the Duelist, but right now that's sort of how I'm playing the deck. And I hope you guys, uh, have enjoyed this test hand video. Leave a like if you did. If you guys want to see a deck profile, let me know. If you want to see the deck profile that I use in this video, it will be in the description below if I remember to put it there. Uh, but yeah, if you guys watched this whole video, thank you so much. Leave a like if you enjoyed. And as always, when you kill, sign out. We'll see you guys in the next one. And of course, a special thanks to my Divine Level channel members here on YouTube, Academic Thick, Travis Harris, and Zors. Thank you guys so much for continuing uh, to support the channel as you have. So thank you very much for that.